executive producer Chuck Lorre and executive producer Steve Holland and Stephen Malaro. And our panel host, our very own tour guide, John Krunas. Welcome, everyone. Will, you got the shady spot. Nice to <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, thank you to our guests. Thank you all so much for joining us at this fantastic event celebrating the Big Bang Theory. What a thing to talk about. Uh, I want to open it up first to uh, Steve, Mr. Malaro. This is a question for you. And a little, just a little bit of context about this question is Gary was saying you have apartment, the, the exterior of the apartment building that they live in right here, right next to it, which is a little hard to see. When we talk about the history of the studio, this is the last standing set of Casablanca. The question is, Warner Brothers Studio has been entertaining the world for over 96 years. We're coming up on 100 years of the most iconic film and television. How does it feel to have shot on this historic backlot and for the show itself to now be such a significant part of the WB legacy? Uh, I, have to say, I mean, it's an honor to, to be part of such a Hollywood institution and for Big Bang to be here for, for 12 years of the 19 years that I've gotten to work for Warner Brothers. Uh, it's also uh, really close to my house, which it doesn't get a lot of credit for. <laughs> So really, convenience is key. Right. Location, location, location. Absolutely. It's uh, on the wanna... tour. Steve's house is on the tour. You can stop in for hamburgers, too. It's OK. Yeah, it's a fully interactive 4D tour of the house. So we he invite you all. an incredible gift shop. <laughs> he doesn't know that it's a gift shop. People are just taking souvenirs right out of the house. Uh, this next one, Chuck, I want to start with you, but I would also like to open it up to everybody. Over the years, Big Bang has garnered obvious, tremendous success globally, recognized as TV's number one hit comedy. The question is, was there a moment, what was the moment when you knew the show is huge, or the show is going to be huge? Was there an aha moment for you that clicked when you knew that this was gonna be the Big Bang Theory? Our first Comic-Con. First time we went to Comic-Con, I thought there'd be 11 people there. Um, I, was, I thought it was a terrible idea. That we'd only been on the air, we'd had 17 episodes, because that was a shortened year, because of the writer's strike. And we went to Comic-Con, and I told the cast before they went out on the stage, you know, don't feel bad if somebody's there. It was wall-to-wall -wall people. Really? Uh, and, uh, and they were, they were greeted like the Beatles. It was, it was something extraordinary was happening. It was really apparent right then. Lightning had uh, struck with this show. And Brian, you and I were talking about that, getting recognized more and more, not in LA necessarily, but outside of LA. Uh, yeah, I think when the show started getting in, into syndication and it was running all the time, uh, I became a familiar face of people. and. Uh, I think in LA, a lot of people don't really come up to you and say, oh, hey, you're an actor or whatever, because they see a lot of actors. But like when I go home to the Midwest, you know, I'll, I'll get people that, you look like the guy in the Big Bang Theory. You, play, <laughs> you look exactly like Penny's boyfriend. <laughs> that is me. So it was, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to get recognized. That's, that's what I knew this show. I, wow, I'm part of a really big show here, because everybody's watching. I still think the greatest response to that like, you know, you look like that guy from the Big Bang Theory. You're like, I get that all the time. I think I can top that. I was in San Francisco with my wife, and a fellow jogged past us on the street. And he stopped, and he jogged backwards, and he looked at me, and he said, you work on the Big Bang Theory. And I said, I do. And he said, this is embarrassing for me. I know your character's name is Will Wheaton, but I don't know what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> and that was when I knew, I've been working as an actor since 1977, and, and uh, I, that was when I knew I was part of something that was so much bigger than me. And that meant so much to so many people that they didn't necessarily need to go into who are the actors behind the characters. They just love the characters, which is a testament to these three guys right here. Well played. Kudos to you. On s sticking with you for a second, you play essentially an exaggerated version of yourself on yeah, the show. He's way cooler than I am. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, where does Big Bang Theory Will Wheaton start and real life Will Wheaton? Like, where, what are the similarities and the differences between Wills? 
it was easier to make the distinction between the two of us when, when the Big Bang Theory's Will Wheaton was a nemesis to Sheldon. Because um, in real life, I adore Jim Parsons, and I'm a massive fan of the show. So for me to be on the set, keeping the fandom in check was always a real challenge. And it wasn't until I had been working on the show for about 10 years that I finally kind of like something happened subconsciously. And I figured out how to be an actor playing myself instead of being myself trying to act as not myself. Um, it was a real challenge. Um, and uh, I'm really grateful to Mark Sandrowski for giving me great direction for so many years, and to the cast and to the writers for always supporting uh, every choice that I made. Was it weird, though, when the director would be like, Will would never say that? Like, Will wouldn't do that. <laughs> there were moments where, like, I remember, I remember in, 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 one, in one episode, I was actually talking to Jim, and Sheldon's bummed out because he has blundered in discovering, discovering a subatomic particle, and he's super disappointed about it, and Will Wheaton is telling him, like, you know, it's okay, like, we stumble into things, and these things happen, and I remember Chuck coming to me during rehearsal and saying that it's... It's, you were talking to him like a parent talks to a child, and that's your, your peers, that's not how it is. And it was me getting out of my own way and not being, not being Will Wheaton me and being Will Wheaton from the TV show, and that was a clear challenge to, to make that distinction between how I am in real life and how I am on the show. That's a fascinating challenge. How did you get roped into the project? How did you audition for yourself? Listen, there was no roping in at all. <laughs> I went in for it first. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It, was, it came down to me and Brian yeah. uh, to play the role Wheaton. And, and it was, I, I understand it was very close, uh, but they ultimately, I think, decided that he was going to be a better Zach than I was, which I also auditioned for. Um, he's better looking than I am and, uh, and taller. So uh, luckily for me, uh, I have a lot in common with Will Wheaton, and I just brought that experience to the role. It was a natural fit. Yeah. He auditioned for every role first, and then they were like, you know what, none of it's going to work, but we like you so much, we're so just going to involve on Bernadette. you. You were so yeah. close on Bernadette. And yeah. I really think that one should have worked out. And by the way, kids at home, that's exactly how Hollywood really works. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. That's TV magic right there. Uh, Steve, Holland, this one's for you. Obviously... As, as tourists, as fans, we get excited seeing things. And, and walking through stage 48 and seeing the sets in person is a very exciting thing. But is there, is there a certain set or is there a moment uh, that, that comes to mind that you're excited for people to experience? Like something that comes to mind that oh, I love the fact that people are going to get to do X. It's so interesting because for, you know, for the last 12 years, when we've had guests come to see tapings of the show and brought them down afterwards to sort of show them around, you know, I got pretty good at being a, a tour guide. You get, you figure out what people like to see. Um, and I think, you know, Sheldon's spot, like sitting in Sheldon's spot is, everyone gets so excited to sh sit in Sheldon's spot. And everyone's like, is it okay? Like, will he be mad if I sit here? Um, so I think there's a lot of fun things, but I think, you know, I'm sure Sheldon's spot will be will be a big hit. I can guarantee that it is. <laughs> that's uh, the that's first place I went to sit when I went on to the, <laughs> of course, on to the tour. <laughs> because now all bets are off. Sheldon Spot, it's been so sacred for so long, and now every everybody gets to experience it. It's going to be a well-worn spot. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to keep it in good enough condition for everybody. It's going to be very worn. Uh, Brian, I want to go to you on this one. Do you have any funny stories or behind-the-scenes moments that uh, people should know on those sets. I know that you were saying you hadn't shot anything in the cafeteria, but for something in the the boys' apartment or in the hallway with the broken elevator, did you have any fantastic standout moments on those sets? Any fun behind the scenes tidbits? I mean, a, a really cool experience for me was um, the Justice League recombination episode where I got to go to the comic book store. You see it on TV and then you, you get in there and you see all the detail with the toys and the comics and the posters and all the stuff and it's like, wow, this is a pretty cool spot. But for me and I think my character Zach was that I was there with the four main guys hanging out with the dudes looking at comics and it was like, kind of felt like part of the gang. And then we get all dressed up and go to a costume contest and it's like, uh, I think Zach has never felt as included with the gang as, uh, as that episode. So that was a very special moment. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> and when you talk about the comic book store and the fantastic design and decoration of it, I also want to shout out to John Schaffner and set decorator Ann Shea, and they did such an amazing, beautiful...
beautiful job on those sets. So kudos all around to an amazing art department. And I don't know if this made the transfer from the set to the museum, but in the hallway where the elevator is at the bottom of those stairs, all the actors would stick their gum before this thing would start. So I'm not sure if that actually got preserved in the That's museum true. or not. Right. But it was wads of gum stuck to the back of the wall. I've been back there and it's I'd, just like, who's I'd chewing gum that. before they call action? They're like, oh, I have gum in my mouth. Like I would. Uh, that's TV it. Will Wheaton, not real life Will Wheaton. That's <laughs> real Will Wheaton would never stick his gum on your wall. Never, but never. TV will. And, and the stairs are tricky Did too. Did you dig a hole in the new place as well? No, no, it's, you'll see, it's the stairs and they go into a fantastic, uh, uh, I don't even know what I want to call it, backing, a scenic backing, and I'm waiting for somebody to think that they're the real stairs that go up and they're gonna walk right into a wall. It's very well done. It's so very no, no brand for Warner Brothers. Very, it's all about physical gags here, physical comedy. Uh, okay, our next one. I want to go back to Chuck. February of this year, Stage 25 became officially known as the Big Bang Theory stage. How does it feel that for a studio, like we said, that's been producing film and television for nearly a hundred years, and some of the most iconic titles, even in your stage, Stage 25, you've had Batman movies, Blade Runner, classic westerns, but that stage is going to forever be known as the Big Bang Theory stage. And out of a hundred years of production, there are only five shows that are commemorated in that way. I think two of them are Chuck's. That's exactly right. <laughs> stage 26 is the two and a half men stage. Next to it is stage 25, the Big Bang Theory stage. What's it like? Oh, it's a, it's a great honor. It's to, to know that, 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 that the show has a, a life beyond beyond our efforts is a, is a terrific feeling. Um, every time I go by, I, I look at the plaque on the wall and it's, it feels special. It's, uh, it, I don't know what else to say. It, it was, it's quite, quite, quite a humbling experience to see that plaque go up. I, I think that pretty much says it right there. It's, it's such an impressive thing. And we, you know, from the, the tour department aspect of we get thousands of people every single day that come here and it's it's the big bang theory it's that show it's it's such a huge thing around the world it's a global sensation there's it, we get a lot of people the only things that they know how to say in english are big bang theory and bazinga uh it's it's a thing that has spoken to the world so so kudos and again congratulations i asked warner, I asked warner brothers if there could be a big bang theory water tower but they said no <laughs> Once we I, give you a water tower, we have to give everybody a water tower. <laughs> exactly. I, I can tell you that the, the, it was an emotional night. The last night we shot our final episode of Big Bang Theory. And as I was leaving, I took three pictures of my hand. And the first one was my hand on Sheldon's spot. And the second one was my hand on the elevator. And then the last one was on the plaque. And then I walked out of that building. And I, and, uh, it's, uh, I, I think it was uh, the, I'm glad that the plaque. Uh, was the last one of the three. It's, uh, I still get emotional thinking about it. It's amazing. Do you have a collection of pictures of your hand? Have just those places. three. I can show you when we're done here. Great wall of China. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. all of them yet you can see. <laughs> You've seen how photogenic his hands are. It makes sense. They are good hands. He's got beautiful hands. Yeah. All right. Take care of them. <laughs> uh, for our final question, really I'm going to open it up to everybody. So if you have something that you would like to share, I welcome that. Having shot here on the lot for 12 long seasons, what does it mean to you that although the series has come to an end, the set lives on for people to experience firsthand. What does it mean to leave this lasting legacy that people will still get to come experience and be part of? What does that feel like? I mean, it's great. Like you were saying, it, it, was, it was an emotional farewell for us too, shooting the last episode to say goodbye to the show and to that stage was really difficult. So it's, I mean, it feels great to know that that people care enough to they're going to want to come visit it, but also that it's there where we can stop by and visit it from time to time, too. It's like going back to your alma mater. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about these sets. Well, we welcome you anytime. Come visit anytime. Thank you very, very much. Uh, on behalf of the tours, thank you very much. I'm going to also now turn it over, so please help me welcome the executive director of our tour department, Mr. Danny Kahn. a century, Warner Brothers has created a legacy of entertainment, capturing the attention 
in the hearts of worldwide audiences. The Big Bang Theory is no exception, as this award-winning pop culture mega-hit created history right here at the studio as television's longest-running multi-camera series, featuring some of the most beloved and, mem and uh, memorable, brilliantly geeky misfits that only ever wanted to fit in with everyone else. And fit in they did, into our living rooms, into our lives, via stories and characters that somehow we were all able to connect to. These moments were created right here at Warner Brothers Studios uh, on these sets that we're about to visit by teams of brilliantly, uh, uh, by a team just as brilliant as the, the characters that were portrayed in the series. We're proud to be working with the best storytellers, cast, craft people, artisans in the business, and excited that we can share this behind the scenes look at their work with our studio tour guests. On behalf of the studio tour, and Big Bang Theory fans everywhere, I'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks to Chuck Lorre, uh, Bill Pretty, who's not here with us today, Stephen Malaro, Steve Holland, the amazingly talented cast, and countless other dedicated people behind the scenes for delivering 12 seasons of uh, unforgettable entertainment. I'd also like to take the opportunity to express my sincerest appreciation to producers Robin Green and Christy Cecil for your generous help with this set move and for your hospitality throughout the years. Thank you so much. Thanks.